Will exercise or nutritional supplements improve cognitive decline? Prepare to be disappointed. This is Healthcare Triage News. First up, effect of a 24-month physical activity intervention versus health education on cognitive outcomes in sedentary older adults, the LIFE randomized trial. We have lots of epidemiologic evidence that physical activity is associated with better cognition, but there could be reverse correlation. We need a randomized controlled trial, and this is it. Researchers randomized more than 1,600 elderly people who were sedentary to one, a structured, moderate intensity physical activity program, including walking, resistance training, and flexibility exercises, or two, a control health education program of workshops and upper extremity stretching. They measured a number of cognitive outcomes, including the digit symbol coding or DSC task subset of the Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale and the revised Hopkins Verbal Learning Test. They also measured global and executive cognitive function and dementia two years after the intervention. At two years, the scores of the cognitive tests were no different between the groups. On a 133-point scale, the mean scores of the DSC were 46.26 in the physical activity group and 46.28 in the control group. The HVLT, which could score up to 12, was 7.22 in the physical activity group and 7.25 in the control group. There were also no significant differences in the measures of global or executive cognitive function, nor any in the diagnosis of cognitive impairment or dementia. The second study tried a different approach. Effect of omega-3 fatty acids, lutein, zeaxanthin, or other nutrient supplementation on cognitive function. The AREDS2 randomized clinical trial. As with physical activity, there's lots of observational data linking diet with Alzheimer's disease. But no randomized controlled trials testing nutrients with cognitive changes. This is that RCT. Using the infrastructure of another trial, investigating macular degeneration in elderly people, researchers randomized more than 3,700 participants for this trial. They got long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, lutein, zeaxanthin, and or placebo in a factorial design. They also got varying combinations of vitamin C, E, beta-carotene, and zinc. Then at baseline and every two years, they were assessed. The main outcome of interest was a composite score of a battery of cognitive function tests, and the score could range from negative 22 all the way up to 17. On that scale, the yearly change for those who received supplements was negative 0.19 for those who got long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids and negative 0.18 for those who did not. Needless to say, this was not a significant difference. Those who received lutein and zeaxanthin had a score change of negative 0.18 versus negative 0.19 in those who did not. Again, not significant. Supplementation with these nutrients had no effect on cognition. The accompanying editorial offered some hope because other studies have shown benefits to physical activity, and I'll quote from it. The FINGER trial reported results of a multifaceted intervention that included diet, exercise, cognitive training, and vascular risk monitoring, compared with provision of general health advice in participants aged 60 to 77 years old who were at risk of developing dementia. At two years, the intervention was associated with significant benefits on a comprehensive neuropsychological test battery. And they're right. These studies should be added to others, not replace them. And I agree with this too. It is likely the biggest gains in reducing the overall burden of dementia will be achieved through policy and public health initiatives promoting primary prevention of cognitive decline rather than efforts directed toward individuals who have already developed significant cognitive deficits. It does seem likely that incorporating physical activity and maybe even diet into holistic changes earlier in life are likely to do more to improve health and cognitive decline than waiting until problems have already developed later in life. Healthcare Triage is supported in part by viewers like you through Patreon.com, a service that allows you to support the show through a monthly donation. We'd especially like to thank our honorary research associates, Cameron Alexander and Kadeem Salamahamed. Thanks, Cameron and Kadeem. If you'd like to support the show, more information can be found at Patreon.com slash Healthcare Triage. <laughs>